the title of our series, but as for myself, I believe in miracles. I kind of have to since I won't be standing here if a miracle didn't happen in my life. 22 years ago, I did not exist. But my, my mother was pregnant with me. She was 38 when she was pregnant with me. And so the, doc the doctors always said, okay, it's going to be a difficult pregnancy. But it became even more difficult because they found out that along with me, there was something else in my mom's uterus. It was a tumor. And the tumor was bigger than me. And so the doctor said, okay, the tumor will grow alongside the baby. The baby gets bigger, the tumor gets bigger. And so there is a chance that the, the tumor might, might crush the baby. And my mom was a medical student, so she had witnessed things like this. And so it was a devastating time in my family's life because, uh, if you don't know, I'm the only child. They don't really have any others. <laughs> and so at that point, they were struggling and they were asking God, why, why, why? And they're praying for miracles, praying for healing. And you know something? Every single time they went to the doctor and they did an ultrasound, the tumor's still there. But April 18th, 1988, it was the day I was born, and because of the tumor, they did a C-section. And when the doctor got my mom open, they found out that there was no tumor there. No, nothing except for a scar. If that's not a miracle, I don't know what that is. But we would like to share with you just some stories and tell you about miracles. I have a friend, and my friend suffers from severe anxiety. Now I know what you're thinking, whenever someone gets up and says, I have a friend, they're usually talking about themselves. Well, <laughs> I, I can promise you, and tears of this that friend that. too, that it is not me. But <laughs> my friend, she, her anxiety like can get so bad that it cripples her. Like she can't get up, she can't eat, she can't keep anything down. She's had to go to the hospital multiple times because of dehydration and lack of nutrition and passing out. And she hasn't d dealt with this her whole life. It, it started uh, when, she, when she came to college and it got to the point where she had to drop out because her health was more important. And I have known her through, throughout all of this. And there are times when she comes crying to me because she doesn't understand why God is making her go through this, why God won't heal her, why God won't deliver her from something that is holding her back in life. And I've prayed with her multiple times. I have been her shoulder to cry on, and, and it's a daily struggle. She has to deal with this every day. And for her, she needs a miracle. But after four years, she's still waiting. And today, we have the pleasure of wrestling with the question, why don't miracles happen? Why are there some people who are the miracle child, like Tirza, and others who have to suffer with something that they didn't ask? Tiffany and Brandon brought to us a definition about miracles, which is an extraordinary, an act of divine intervention, an extraordinary act of divine intervention in human affairs. Sorry. Anyway, and we learn that these miracles come from God. And as believers, we have a relationship with God. And if you guys know anything about friendship or being a believer, a relationship is a two-way street. And today, Tears and I each have three things that we want you to think about when it comes to you, God, and how come miracles don't happen today. The first thing I have to share with you is that maybe you're not looking in the right place. In culture today, we are a society that focuses like on instant gratification. Like if, if it doesn't happen right now, then it's not worth going for, and and we always need to to be persevering and grabbing things for ourselves. And well, if you need a miracle or if you need God to intervene in your life, you know you might you might be like, okay, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to pray to God, and I'm and I'm going to wait. 
okay, I'm done waiting. Now what can I do to get this done for myself? And like as, as Tiffany and Brandon said, achieving something that you need yourself is not a miracle. It is an extraordinary act of divine intervention. So who are you looking towards? Mm. Brings us to our next point. You're not asking the right person. In James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, it says, You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So pretty much, you need to, you need to go to God. You need to ask God. We need to bring our needs before God. My friend Mary, every... Oops, I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's awesome. Pray for her. She, every day, every, like, multiple times a day, she just prays to God. And she asks God for help, and I pray for her all the time. Um, and it's just... To, you're not looking in the right places. You need to ask the right person. In Matthew 7, 7 through 8, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and him who knocks the door will be open. All right. So this is, you know, we're not, as people, we're not generally looking. We're looking in the wrong places. So where do we need to be looking? We need to be looking to God. All right. So when we look to God, we need to ask. So you need to be submitting yourself before God. And all things, all these things are great, but it's not that simple. You can't just lay out everything before God and be like, all right, I need this to happen in my life. I need this amount of money to pay off my school bills. I need, you know, I my grandpa is dying and he needs to live for another hundred years. It's, it's not, it's not just asking, it's not just going to God. There's another part, and that brings us in to the third part that I want to share to you, is you do not believing. Now, after what I say, you might have more questions, but we're not going to get into it very deep today, because later on you're going to hear from another team of pastors at our church who's going to talk to you about faith a little bit more. But I just, I just want to challenge you, if you don't have faith, if you don't believe, truly believe deep down with God, these miracles are not going to happen. In Matthew 13, 54 through 58, um, Jesus is doing his ministry. And it says, coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in the synagogue. And they were amazed. Where did the man get this? Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother named Mary? Aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where did this man get all these things? And they looked, and they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown and is in his own house is a prophet without honor. And he did not do any miracles there because of their lack of faith. Jesus is known for miracles. It's probably one of the most controversial things that unbelievers challenge Christians today, is if all these miracles happened in the Bible, why aren't they happening today? And here, Jesus says he did not do any miracles because they did not have any faith. They even said that he did all these miracles, and yet they didn't believe him. So we need, we need to, we need to believe. Later on, there's a story in Matthew 17 about this guy and his son. And he comes to Jesus, begging him to heal his son, because his son is suffering greatly. He has seizures, and he falls into the fire, and he brought his son to his disciples. He's like, these guys spend time with Jesus. Like, they got to they gotta be able to help him. So his disciples, you know, they, they tried their best, but they couldn't do it. So he has nothing else to do but seek out Jesus for his son. And Jesus goes, oh, man, have you guys seriously learned nothing? You can't just walk up to a person and say, bye-bye, demons. But you got to believe. you got to have <laughs> faith in why you're doing it. And the disciples like, why? Why couldn't we do it? We tried everything. And Jesus replied in verse 20 and 21. He says, because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth, that if you have faith,